Welcome to the Indigenous Vision Monthly Report for November 2021. Nyawe everybody. This is Tyler Walls, Project Director with Indigenous Vision. Giving you a report out, we thought that we would provide monthly reports to our supporters. Thank you all for allowing us to do this in this position that we're in and uh, facilitating and administrating this wonderful educational nonprofit to help revitalize Indigenous communities. With these short reports, in months to come, we're going to be providing history and highlights of where our funding comes from, a history and highlights of our projects. We have six wonderful projects that have come a long way. Also, our personal journeys, who and where we are in regards to our work and culture humility, our work as mappers, our work in IV media, uh, producing music, uh, where we're well over 200 episodes. For myself, administratively, we have uh, successfully just filed our 2020 annual tax return for our organization. So that was a huge monumental task. Thank you to our tax man down in Phoenix. Shout out to him. You could find those tax returns on our website and also at GuideStar, where we are have a silver star of transparency and we're working our way up to platinum one of these uh, potential days. And with these podcasts and annual reports, that's exactly what we're attempting to do is to be more transparent, but also provide insight on the wonderful projects and support that we're continuing to need to, to move them forward. I just got done attending wonderful conferences this year, the Indigenous Mapping Workshop that is held annually over 100 mappers from across the world, uh, indigenous map makers working to decolonize the map and to counter map our significant stories and protect our land base. Many more projects in our own mapping efforts that Suta can share and, and projects uh, reports out ahead of time in future. Year in review, wow, we've come a long, long way. I think it'll take hours to really give you a review, but real quickly, um, we've partnered with so many great people along the way. Uh, our culture humility efforts have just skyrocketed. So I'm really looking forward to see where that goes, working with institutions, but mainly working with people that make up those institutions. We've uh, grown in regards to our land trust. We have fully implemented a cultural land trust where we are uh, really packaging up that program for it to be sufficient to where donors, landowners can start donating their land, which we have a, a potential landowner in, in New York, where we're working with getting uh, some acres donated to this land trust to be held in trust for the community. Um, so a lot more fun things to report out on that and other areas within Montana that we're working with private landowners to open up access. And so if it's not the full donation, we're working with landowners to provide access to, to do cultural activities. 2022, the sky's the limit. We have uh, a whole list of things to, to accomplish. And I think we're setting the bar high. And, and I think ultimately our main goal is to continue to garnish the support from all of you to our funders, to our donors. We thank you again for allowing us to be here. Uh, real quickly, the six programs in which we implement IV maps, cultural land trust, emergency water systems, youth empowerment, IV media, and finally cultural humility. So stay tuned and we'll provide reports on each of those programs as we move forward. Want to remind all of our supporters that next Tuesday, November 30th is Giving Tuesday. So please, we ask you to consider donating to Indigenous Vision. We are a 501c3 nonprofit in which you will receive a tax deduction. Receipt. Hello, everybody. Suta Calling, last Executive Director of Indigenous Vision. Our November updates for the programs that I'm working on specifically, we just were, were awarded, preliminarily awarded, an environmental justice grant from the EPA to work on chronic wasting disease and 
This grant specifically is for collecting baseline data that may be contributing to the instance of chronic wasting disease. And then chronic wasting disease detection through working dogs will follow that. Over to the Blackfoot Place map, we have been releasing place-based visit videos. You can find those on our social media platforms, my social media platform, and shared to our Indigenous Vision YouTube and website soon. Over the summer, was able to visit several different places and have videos on cube to come out uh, for future updates and how to support those projects there. Over to Indigenous Vision collaborations and project partners. Indigenous Vision is working with an Indigenous Scholars Hub, which has many, many dozens of members, both Indigenous and non-native from different universities to start turning over and uplifting indigenous narratives in the science realm. And so this is exciting work uh, spearheaded by members of INIA initiative and several different universities and indigenous vision and our environmental and climate change and food sovereignty projects are so proud to be part of this new forming group. And for Indigenous community members, urban or reservation, we do have emergency water systems available. If you go to our website and fill out a form, we will mail you one. We also have self-defense training payment resources for getting your self-defense training paid for. If you're interested in having up to six weeks of training paid for, please see our website again. There is a form there where you can learn more about that. Updates on the Cultural Conservation Land Trust is that we are currently talking with our land trust lawyers to get formally established as a land trust. And we still have the 501c3 right now where we can provide tax receipts for access or for donation partially or in full. Currently right now, we do have the lady in New York who has amazing land right there in southwestern part of New York. And another lady landowner here in Montana has a fairly significant site that I've spent a lot of time. I have a video coming out soon. It's called Bear Gulch Place Visit, and you can see why that place is so important. We are currently helping the landowner pursue her dreams for the site, which are very in line with our dreams in terms of preservation and preserving this site, the site gets about one, at least one tour a day, three to four tours a week. And so the site is really in need of protecting and establishing trails, establishing the campsite, and then putting up protective barriers between people, the tourists and the people that come visit it, and the actual pictographs and petroglyphs so that they're not touched or altered in any way from the visiting. So we are currently writing a grant for that, working with the Montana Historical Society and establishing it as a, as a recognized historical place and the Register of National Historic Places. We're also putting a grant in to get those developments needed for protection. And then also possibly work into these other places. At my Helena visit, I met with, coincidentally, some sheriffs and deputies that were out on patrol at one of the pictograph sites. And they said every year this site gets worse and worse. People chip off the pictographs to take them home and put them on their mantle. And there is just not, even with these regular patrols, there's just not enough protection around these. So Indigenous Vision would like to partner partner with these sheriff's associations, trail guide associations, which we had some very brief talks about, but would like to formally establish those partnerships so that we can continue preserving these sites that aren't receiving any protection right now. Uh, we would also like to have a small slush fund of donation and funds raised for when we get an emergency application for one of these sites to have the ability to put up the fencing or put up the video cameras as needed. So if you're interested in donating and supporting this project, please see our website, indigenousvision.org cultural land trust to see more. This month on Ivy Music, we are officially posting our 211th episode. You're invited to listen on the Indigenous Vision SoundCloud page, where we not only share some of the most current Indigenous music, we share every link so that listeners can explore, 
follow and support their new favorites. For the second time this year, I've also submitted our program to Sirius XM's Indigiverse, which is their dedicated channel to Indigenous programs. And if we do get in, you can check that out at channel 165. This month, we're also introducing the Indigenous Artist Spotlight, where one artist per month will be interviewed by yours truly to give our listeners a more in-depth experience with the artists themselves. Our first feature will be the Indigenous punk rock band 1876 out of Portland in the Pacific Northwest. So you can check that out on the Indigenous Vision SoundCloud. Thank you for listening to the Indigenous Vision November 2021 report brought to you by the collective that makes up Indigenous Vision. We are an educational nonprofit based in Montana and Arizona. If you would like to make a donation, learn about any of our programs, please check out our website, indigenousvision.org.